Hi, thanks so much for joining me for this introduction into scientific notation, a critical skill um, for being able to communicate in chemistry. In scientific notation, what we want to be doing is finding a way to express very large or very small numbers without having to have a lot of um, zeros or values. So, um, you know, there's there's a number that we call Avogadro's number, and it's six, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one. I think I probably have really close to the number of zeros, but the point is, we don't want to be writing numbers like that. So instead, what we do is we write the core value and if you've learned significant figures, we would write that core value or the measurement. And we're going to write that as a number in front. So I'll do that one up front, um, up ahead. I'll do this one larger. So I have 3.0. What that tells me is my measurement was able to give me very accurately those two values. Now, I want the magnitude to be expressed, so that's measurement. I want the magnitude to be expressed as multiplying many times by 10. So this part tells me the magnitude of a number. Okay, so we have measurement and magnitude. This number in front is referred to as the coefficient. This number right here is referred to as the exponent. Now in chemistry, our coefficient has to be a number that is greater than or equal to 1 but less than 10. So I would not write this number as 30 times 10 to the 13th. Okay, that would not be correct scientific notation. And in my chemistry class, you would get a slight ding on your, on your score for that problem. All right, this number has to be less than 10, but it has to be greater than or equal to 1. Okay, and these are just the guidelines that we use for this. Um, the exponent, okay, um, the exponent we'll see, I think, in a little bit more detail. This talks a little bit about um, whether it's going to be positive or negative. It's going to be positive for very, very large numbers. It's going to be negative for very, very small numbers, okay? Now, um, we're going to be converting from scientific notation. So if the exponent is positive and we want to get it into decimal notation, we're going to move the decimal point to the right. If, on the other hand, the exponent is negative, we're going to go to the left. So positive is right. So this is my PR statement. Negative is left. So that there's none of you left behind. Okay? I don't know. I'm stretching here, kiddos. Come up with a good school-appropriate phrase and share it with your your fellow students and your teacher. Okay? Um, we will get into calculations in just a moment. Now, one word of caution. Um, I'm going to be going over how to do these without a calculator, but when you use a calculator, you want to look for either an exponent key or much more likely an EE -E key. And that EE -E key takes care of the times and the ten. So that number that I had before, I would type in e 3.0. Then I'd find that EE -E key. It might be a second function. And then I would type in the exponent. Notice I didn't type in a ten. I didn't, or I didn't do the multiplication sign. I didn't do the ten. And I didn't do a caret to raise it to a power. That singular stroke takes care of the times and the 10 and the power. If you don't do this, you may be adding factors of 10, especially during division. So you've got to be, it can really throw you off. 
So when you're checking your work, do it by hand first and then check with your calculator. So let's just see by hand how we convert from a decimal into scientific notation. So this is a very large number and I'm going to write the value in front as 7.5 and now I want to tell you how large it is. And since it's a very large number, I know I'm going to have a positive exponent. Okay, so I'm going to go over one, two, three, four, five, six, seven places. So that means if I took the number 7.5 and multiplied it by 10 seven times, I would get that value. Okay, this number would be negative. 2.349. I'm going to drop those trailing zeros because they're telling me how large my number is. And I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And so that's a positive 5. Notice that the value is negative, but the power is positive there. Okay, this next one, 9.26 times 10 to the positive 3, because I went over 1, 2, 3. Now look at this small number. Uh, all these numbers are simply telling, all those zeros are telling me how big the number is. So I'm going to write 2.31 times 10. Now, I know it's a small number, less than 1, so I'm going to have a negative power. And now I have to figure out how, to, how far to go over. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. That means if I took 2.31 and divided by 10 six times, I would get my value. Okay, This number... Um, for those of you who have learned about something called significant figures, there's a reason I'm keeping those zeros. Um, so just hold, you know, hold that thought uh, if you haven't covered that yet in your class. So this would be 10 to the minus 1. I have to keep the negative for this value, 3 point, whoop, that's a 5, 4, 9. This is much less than 1, so I know it's a negative power. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. I have to go over 5 so that the number in front is greater than or equal to 1, but less than 10. Now, my students typically ask me, how do I know whether to put it into scientific notation? And here's my general guideline. The whole purpose of scientific notation is to make writing small numbers and big numbers more convenient. So, I look at this power in front. Okay? If that power is negative 2, negative 1, of course there could be a 0. Multiplying by 10 to the 0 is the same thing as multiplying by 1. If it would be plus 1 and plus 2, if the question doesn't say put this number in scientific notation, um, my general guideline that I follow is these I would write as in the normal form. You know, I thought it took longer to write this one in scientific notation than it would have to write in decimal form. So it is a bit about convenience. Of course, you have to look at the context of the question. Okay, so if it's negative 3 and more negative, if it's positive 3 and more positive, I tend to go with scientific notation. Okay? So that's kind of my guideline. And, of course, that's up to your, your teacher or your professor to decide. Now let's go the opposite way. There are many classes where you are not allowed to use calculators on multiple choice anymore. There's just too much information in calculators. Um, so you need to know how to do this by hand. So this means I have to multiply this by 10 to the 7. It's a positive value. So I need to make it a big number. Remember PR positive go to the right. So 5, that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay, this is a large number. Positive go to the right. So 1 is the original, then 1, 2, 3. 
So if I went over one, two, three, you may have to add a zero to maintain that magnitude. This one would be negative two. Now I have to go over five places. So the three is one, the five is two, three, four, five. Okay. This negative power means I'm dealing with a very, very small number. So we, you know, no one left behind. So we want to go to the left. So I have that five, three, nine, and I have to go over one, and then two, three, four, five, six, seven. Now here's the key, kiddos. Don't just put a decimal point there. You need a zero in front to set off that decimal so it doesn't look like some random mark on the page. Okay, this next one, I'm gonna go over one, two, three. So I need 0 0.00112, okay, negative power, negative left. So I'm going to have 0 0.1234235. So I went over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places. And it's, you know, if you have a calculator available, practice doing this by hand, and then double check your work with a calculator. That can help you also know that you're entering scientific notation correctly into your scientific calculator. Thank you so much for joining me.